Hello gorgeous humans, it's finally October, which means it's officially spooky season, and I for one am very excited to trick or treat myself with all of the eerie, spooky, creepy, gothic books I can get my hands on. This video is going to come at you in two parts. In the first part, I want to recommend a bunch of spooky books that I've read over the years and really enjoyed that I think are perfect for this time of year. And in the second part, I want to share with you my excessively long TBR of spooky books that I'm hoping to get to this month. The list is ridiculously long, so there's no way I'll get to all of them this month, but I'm a high achiever and I like to make lists that will make me feel bad about myself when I can't complete them, so <laughs> I will share my TBR with you as well. As always, if you have any recommendations, this time specifically spooky recommendations, then leave those in the comments down below to give me and everyone else even more ideas of what to read this spooky season. Speaking of spooky, what's really scary is going about your life online without protecting your privacy and security. Thank word today's sponsor ExpressVPN is here to help us all secure our information with best in class encryption and leak proofing. Every time you connect to public Wi-Fi at a coffee shop or at the airport, anyone connected to the same Wi-Fi can easily steal your personal information. ExpressVPN encrypts your traffic between secure VPN servers and your computer, as well as hiding your IP address and mixing your traffic with other users to protect you. ExpressVPN is so ridiculously easy to use. Open the app and connect with just one click. Phone, tablet, computer, router, no matter where you are or what devices you're using, a single ExpressVPN subscription has you covered. And don't worry, it won't slow down your streaming. ExpressVPN invests in only premium servers across 94 countries, making them consistently faster than any other VPN provider. And you can feel secure with their trusted server technology. It's physically impossible for any of ExpressVPN servers to store logs of any customers. And if you ever have any questions, you can use their 24-7 chat to get your question answered within seconds instead of minutes or hours. Another great thing ExpressVPN allows you to do is to change your location online. I was really in the mood to watch a spooky season class as the leaves started to turn, but the one I had my eye on wasn't available on Canadian Netflix. So I launched the ExpressVPN app, changed my location to the UK, clicked connect and refresh Netflix, and there you go. It's just that simple. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash plantbasedbride or by clicking the link in the description box down below. That's expressvpn.com slash plantbasedbride or click the link in the description box down below to get three months free of ExpressVPN. Thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this spooky video. And now let's hop in to the recommendations. I wanna start by recommending some spooky classics. I don't know about you, but in the autumn, I just love reading classics. There's something about them that feel perfect for this time of year. And of course, if you can read a spooky classic in October, even better. So here are a few of my favorite Favorite spooky classics. First is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is one of my favorite classics of all time. It has such an eerie atmosphere with tension that continues to build through the entire novel and a mystery at its core, a dead wife, and our unnamed protagonist trying to put all of the pieces together as she starts to fall into a kind of obsession with Rebecca. Perfect for this time of year. Another favorite classic of mine, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This is a story of greed, narcissism, vanity, hatred, obsession, and extravagance, a man condemned, and the sins he's willing to commit to maintain his beautiful veneer. Plus, it's super short, so you can get the dopamine hit of finishing it even faster. Another one I really enjoyed was The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is also a super short read, but it really delivers on the suspense and the horror, and it also explores the duality of man in a really interesting way. Another classic for this time of year, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is one that is a little bit more in the middle for me. Most mostly because Dr. Frankenstein and his monster are both insufferable, but still this book is so worth a read, if only to compare to all of the typical pop culture references to Frankenstein you've probably seen, and it has beautiful descriptions of the landscape, really lovely prose, and explores quite a few fascinating themes. Totally spooky, monster fiction, great for October. Another super short recommendation, a short story actually, The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. This is such a horrifying read 
read. It really pulls you in. It's gripping. It has so many layers. It explores really important subject matter in such a masterful way. And it's exciting. It's suspenseful. It's intense. And it's only 30 pages long or something like that. So definitely check out The Yellow Wallpaper if you haven't read it yet. Moving into a couple monster books for you. I don't tend to read a lot of monster fiction when I'm reading something spooky, but I have read a couple good ones I wanted to recommend. Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant, Killer Mermaids, Must I Say Anything More, Devolution, a first-hand account of the Rainier Sasquatch Massacre by Max Brooks, Killer Sasquatches, Killer Sasquatch, Killer Sasquatches. I don't know what the plural of Sasquatch is, but again, need I say more? Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. This is an incredible incredible, incredible book where members of the KKK are actually monsters, literal monsters, and it's horrifying and terrifying and also so deeply layered with commentary and exploration of the deepest form of human hatred. Empire of Wild by Sherry Dimeline. This is a story based on the Métis legend of the Rougarou, a wolf man who stalks and kills people who have sinned in one way or another, either consuming them or turning them into a Rougarou themselves. This is such a terrifying read, but it also explores colonialism and racism and the connection between the Christian church and the oppression of indigenous people in Canada. And it's a really interesting lens to use to look at that subject matter. And I think it was just so incredibly well done. I don't tend to read a lot of witchy books, and often when I do, I'm not necessarily a fan of how they've been done. Maybe I'm just not a witch fan. But one that I've read and really enjoyed is Slewfoot by Brahm. This takes place in the Middle Ages and explores the conflict between the pagans and the Puritans. And our main character is incredibly witchy. I don't want to give away too much, but it's quite, quite good. The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina by Zareda Cordova. This one has so many witchy vibes. It's a little cozier than some of the other ones. It doesn't really have a horror undertone to it, though it does explore some darker issues. It does have a little bit of violence and body horror going on, but it really explores complex family dynamics, matriarchies, the experience of being Latin American and finding your place, belonging both out on your own and within a complicated family. Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra Kaw. This one seems to be really controversial. People seem to either love it or hate it. I really enjoyed it. I had a good time. I thought it was spooky, paranormal, ghost vibes. I liked it. The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell. This is another favorite of mine. Horror with spooky, witchy, and paranormal vibes. It takes place in a gothic manner in two different time periods, and it is so scary. Deeply unsettling. I scared myself while I was reading so many times because my brain started creating sound effects <laughs> as if I was in the book to scare me. So I kept quickly turning to look behind me because I thought that the baddies of the book were real. It's so immersive and very scary. Moving into general horror books, I want to start with Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This is sci-fi horror, but it has such a great eerie vibe. It is very creepy, trance-like prose that will lead you deeper and deeper into Area X, where nothing and no one is as it seems. So good. Moon of the Crested Snow by Wab Geshig Rice. This is the story of an isolated northern Anishinaabe tribe who have been trapped in a harsh winter with no power and no incoming resources, what it takes to survive and who deserves to. House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. This is one of my favorite books of all time of any genre, let alone one of my favorite horror novels. This is mind-bending horror in a house that's bigger on the inside, an ever-changing labyrinth with a monster at the center. But you never quite know if the monster is real or if it's just in the people's minds as they slowly start to lose them trapped inside. This book has so many layers. It is ridiculously complex. The formatting is incredibly unique and it really adds to the storytelling. It takes a lot of effort to read, but I highly recommend it. I think it is so worth it. The perfect read for this time of year. The Murders of Molly Southbourne by Tade Thompson. This is a creepy and creative horror novella that left me queasy and incredibly unsettled. Lakewood by Megan Giddings. This is an exploration of the exploitation of marginalized people for medical experimentation based in the historic reality of the use 
of black people and black slaves for medical experimentation in America. It is stomach turning and just absolutely horrifying. Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica. This book is very heavy in the body horror, so I would not recommend for people who are queasy, but this explores the concept that in an undetermined amount of time in the future, we no longer have enough animals to use for livestock for human consumption, so we start to eat humans and to raise, breed, and butcher them as if they were non-human animals, and what that looks like, and the moral quandaries that come with that. Horrifying, but also fascinating. A House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman. This one was horrifying for me. If you're afraid of water like I am, this one will scare you in the best possible way, but like really scare you. Two teenagers go on a date and they discover a house, an entire house at the bottom of a lake, and they decide to explore it. And that may have been a really bad decision. <laughs> The Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. This one is deeply unsettling. Another big trigger warning for harm towards children. It's intense. It's scary. You don't really know what's happening. It really tricks you into thinking that something different is happening than what really is. And you get the POV of a talking cat, which sounds hokey, but actually wasn't. I really enjoyed that. Books with general eerie vibes that I don't feel like fit into any other category. Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. This is a short story collection that draws upon fairy tales and urban legends to explore women's issues through a queer lens and all of the stories have a really eerie, uncomfortable feeling to them. There's this tension, there is darkness around the edges. The stories have that sort of paranormal horror element to them, but they also have so much to give thematically. The Memory Police by Yoko Agawa. This book is so hard to describe, but it has just such an impeccable eerie atmosphere as people try to live their regular lives, while entire categories of objects like scissors, books, and people slowly start to disappear, and the people who remain forget that they ever existed. So creepy. There's a story within a story that's even creepier than the main story. The whole thing is just a masterclass in eerie, spooky atmosphere. The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. If you're looking for another short story, The Lottery is a classic for a reason. It's so good and so terrifying with so few words. Shirley Jackson is a master. Another Shirley Jackson, We Have Always Lived in a Castle. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Again, impeccable eerie atmosphere, so creepy, so unsettling, with so many undertones and fascinating themes woven throughout, as Jackson loves to do. This book is a 10 out of 10, and I highly recommend, especially during spooky season. If you like a crumbling house, in the middle of nowhere with a family who have really strange dynamics between them and you don't really know what's going on, some witchy vibes, it's really good. Comfort Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valente. This one's another really short one, a play on the story of Adam and Eve with a really horrifying center. Weird, unsettling, I loved it. Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This is one that I just finished, so I haven't had a long time to really process my thoughts, but this one has a really creepy, slow-paced, feeling to it, atmospheric. We have the modern day, and then we also go back in the past to see what led to where we are. And the past timeline takes place in a submarine in a really deep part of the ocean. So again, if you're scared of underwater things, this one is a great one. Very lyrical. It has more of a literary fiction feeling to it. It centers around a married couple and one of the wives has come back from a mission and is not the same. And her wife is trying to figure out what happened to her and if she can save her. Very creepy. I also wanted to share a few YA recommendations. I'm keeping them separate just because I know some people don't prefer to read YA, so I just wanted to make it clear that these are YA, but they fit into a bunch of these different categories. Categories. The first one is The Sawkill Girls by Claire Legrand. This one I read quite a while ago, so I'm just clinging to an impression of it being quite slow paced and spooky and unsettling as teenage girls start to go missing one by one with some elements of fantasy and the paranormal and there's feminism woven throughout. It's a really interesting read from what I remember. The Companion by Katie Allender. This one I also read a while ago, but I remember it being so creepy. The gothic atmosphere was top notch. It takes place in a huge manner. Our protagonist is brought to be a companion for a girl around her age who has a mysterious illness. 
and she starts to find unsettling notes and messages around the manor and tries to figure out what's going on. A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee, another YA book with really intense gothic vibes. It's mysterious, there's dark academia vibes. I really enjoyed it. Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour, another YA. This one has paranormal vibes. It takes place on a coastline, so it's gray and misty and atmospheric. Don't make a drinking game out of how many times I say atmospheric or atmosphere in this video because you will be blackout drunk. But this book has such an impeccable atmosphere. It has really deep character development that I deeply appreciated, and it has that paranormal element that I don't typically read, but I really enjoyed in this book. The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gould, another YA that is quite terrifying. I found myself scared in real life while reading this one, which doesn't always happen. Quite unsettling. For all of these, of course, check out trigger and content warnings to make sure there's something that you can read safely. But this one, just beware of violence toward children. Death of children is a big part of this story. I feel like I'm forgetting something, so if I have, I'll pop up even more recommendations here on the screen so that you can grab them. Hopefully at least a couple of these have piqued your interest and you can pick them up this spooky season. I also wanted to make sure to share with all of you my well-read purse, which they gifted to me a couple months ago. I've already shared it on all my other social media and just raved about it, but I wanted to share it here too for any of you who don't follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Well-read makes these beautiful vegan leather purses and they look look like books on the outside, but can hold all your essentials inside, and I am absolutely obsessed. I picked A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare for my first well-read purse, but if you know me, this may be the first, but it won't be the last. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. It's so well made, all the stitching is perfect, the quality feels super nice, and I just feel like bell in real life when I use it as my purse. So I wanted to share it with all of you and encourage you to check out their website because they keep adding new designs and they're all amazing. Now that I've shared my recommendations with you, it's time to info dump my TBR. <laughs> so I'm going to pop up on the screen all of the books that I'm hoping to read in October or maybe next October and the October after that. All the spooky books that are on my TBR right now. I'll start with the ones that I either already have in physical form or are closer to the top of my list. And then after that, it'll just be other books that I've heard are spooky that have piqued my interest. So many books to read and so little time. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books I talked about in this video or any of the books that I'm thinking of reading. Let me know your thoughts. Are they worth my time? Are they truly spooky? Or would they fit better as just a general autumn read? Or do they not fit at all? Let me know. Don't forget to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash plantbasedbride or by clicking the link in the description box below. Thank you again so much to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video and thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you as always to my patrons for your support. I adore you all. I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye friends.